would you tell yourself if you could go back to your first day of training? Train harder. Why? I think there's some uh, opportunities that I missed out on. Um, I started uh, teaching early uh, just because of the situation I was in. Uh, the chief instructors left our area and I... Uh, I spent a lot of time developing people and helping them, and that was great in that aspect, but it held me back a little bit myself. So it, it's trying to find that balance. But when you, we do it part-time, because I have a day job, and we have to do the martial arts, and it's, it's all about balance. But I, I wish I would have taken more opportunities when they were available to me. Well, I would say focus more on listening and taking notes. <laughs> and uh, well, I was I was a troubled youth, so uh, I didn't listen to my teachers the way I should have. So you know, buckle down, focus more, and definitely write a lot of notes, and don't trust it to your memory. Oh my gosh, first day of training. Uh, you really did, well. You need to pay attention to the details. It's really easy to miss what they're showing you, even though it's in plain sight. And so you need to train your eyes, and you need to make sure that you reach forward because they're not going to give it to you. Not on purpose, it's just you're not going to notice. So that would be my first thing to say, because there's so much I missed. I should have done this years and years ago. Why didn't you? Why did you start later? Oh, yeah. Uh, college, jobs, everyday life stuff. But I should have done it and made time for it. I would probably save myself some time and probably have been more successful sooner if I just... Uh, listen to my instructor and my coach and <laughs> that seems to be the common answer so far instead of uh you know trial and error you know we, we learn from our own mistakes and you know sometimes i would be well let me just try something fancier or you know more kicks or more this or more that in my forms or different things and, and it was like you know what god all i had to do is just do it perfect you know <laughs> like like there was nothing wrong with the forms i was doing you know or the weapons that i was doing or so, and kind of the same thing with fighting. I think uh, I just probably threw, you know, when they give the stats, when you watch a boxing match or something, like how many how many punches were thrown and how many landed, and you know, my stats were probably astronomical because I just kicked and kicked and kicked and kicked and punched, and, and then I became a smarter fighter, and I'm like, wow, I didn't have to work that hard, <laughs> you know? Work smarter, I, not harder. Yeah, I mean, I was just throwing everything but the kitchen sink at people, and then when you become a smarter fighter and can time things, and, you know, it's a lot easier, and you're not exhausted by the end of the match. Sure is. So I think, I think just listening to my coach and uh, feeling, feeling that you could, uh, you know, just do things 100% correct and, and perfect instead of always looking for something fancier out there and stuff, so. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Shian Claude from New World Martial Arts Canada. We are part of three associations, Circle of Master USA, Ohio. We are part of WKU in uh, Pennsylvania, Pocono, and New World Martial Arts Cornwall, Canada, which is just by the border. I'm a Shonru, traditional style uh, a master. My grandmaster is Soke Mike Bissonnette. He is having a seminar today in Pressure Point, and I've been doing martial arts for uh, 30 years now. I started in Kenpo for six years, earned my black belt, and then I have met uh, Soke Mike Bissonnette. Uh, I love his style, and I'm there uh, for uh, the last uh, 24 years now. Yeah. And if you could go back to that first day of training, what would you tell yourself? I'd probably tell me uh, the same thing, because I started martial arts. Uh, I was about uh, 17, 18 years old uh, from the Bruce Lee movie. We were uh, a bunch of friends gathering, you know, and wrestling around and uh, we uh, found uh, martial arts with Bruce Lee and that's when uh, we start doing martial arts and now after 30 years I do it because I need it it's like it's like drug you know you, you, I want to stay fit I'm going to be 65 in February and uh, I do it for a living you know uh, I do it because I love it so the secret for anything you do in life is uh, be passionate confident and Persevere, steady, steady, regardless. Don't think about the black belt or uh, the dance or whatever. Just do what you can do best. And I'm sure this is uh, the perfect ingredient so that you will uh, be successful in life. I think what I would tell myself is that whenever, and that's the way I've always 
done anything in my life is give it 100% and, uh, and practice. You know, uh, I started off doing uh, the classes as for the classes and uh, it didn't take very long that I realized to perfect things, you have to do them repetitively to get the hand-eye coordination. Everything sort of really uh, sinking in well because when you become a black belt, that's the beginning. And uh, if you can make yourself uh, a better black belt at the end of that day, then you're starting off with a stronger foundation. So I guess the first thing I would have said to myself if I could go back now is that I'm going to do this every day. And that's what I do now. And it just feels that much better. I feel I've consolidated the uh, art. And every time I practice, there's always something to improve. You know, you never have it right 100%. So I think that's what I would have told myself is to do this every day. My, my name is Soki Mike uh, Bissonnette from Canada, and I got 10 schools, and uh, the first thing in my style, it's they learn discipline and respect. They're not there to, uh, I say that, um, discipline means you don't fight on the street for nothing, and respect means you're going to respect your teacher and everything. That's the first thing what we, te we teach, the kids and the adults. So is that what you would do? You would go back in time and take that lesson and, and better instill it in yourself? Oh yes, that's the first thing we would do. Discipline and respect, or we do. That's what I was taught and that's, I've been doing it for 42 years of teaching and that's what I teach my students. Discipline and respect. I would tell myself primarily, if I could go back, I was a wrestler in high school. I was, I was a judo player. The karate, the first day of class, was so much easier. I said, hey, this is a lot of fun. We never knew we were going to be famous or well-known or successful, but it was fun. And that's what people need to do today, is have fun doing it. It's still a ball. I've been doing it now almost 60 years, and it's still a blast. But this is fun. And if you could go back in time to your first day of training, yes, what would you tell yourself? Then I won't believe that I made it as far as I made it today. It's been a journey, a good journey, great instructors, and for those who want to join the martial arts, just remember join the best school that you can and continue training no matter what. I'm 57 years old, I fought cancer, and I'm still standing here today. I would, t I honestly, I've thought about this before. I, I would tell myself that I'm in for a great adventure and an unbelievable life-changing experience. That's what I would tell myself. I guess the, I was two when I was doing this, so I don't know if you really understand me at that time. So maybe, maybe roll forward to four or five. Yeah, that'd be a little more. I'd tell you just be patient, because I know there was a time where I stopped, and I, I would tell that version of me to keep going, you know. Ne never give up, you know. Especially on those times where I, I, we just moved and everything, so it was a little different. I got into sports, which that also was cool, you know, doing that. But I tell them to still keep training doing the, doing the martial arts. Don't get discouraged by failing. Because I first time I win, I got punched and got a bloody lip and just realized, okay, I could have quit easily and no one would have blamed me for it. But I think we all fail. Anybody that's trained has failed or isn't good at something and you got to do it and push yourself. And that's what I, I would tell myself then, and I'll still tell myself now. Push myself. Holy shit, what am I into? <laughs> Actually, I went into training because I got beat up as a kid, the typical story. Uh, guys took my sneakers away, and I decided they were never going to do that again. The next day, I went back to school with a baseball bat. But that's another story. So, started martial arts when... Um, when you saw Chinese lettering, you thought it was a restaurant. <laughs> there were no martial arts schools around. Maybe in Brooklyn, where I come from, I think it was like three schools when I started. It was amazing. So, it's all good. Enjoy the journey. That's what I would tell myself. You know? it's, what's more important is each, each and every moment, is living in that moment and embracing that moment. That's the most important thing. Don't worry about what you can be in the future, what you're going to be. Who are you going to meet? What are you going to do? Don't worry about that. Worry about right now. Right this very moment is what's most important. I actually remember it pretty well. I was terrified. 
But uh, my reaction was just to jump in and, and just follow along. You know, you learn by watching first. So that's the first, one of the first skills you develop in the martial arts, watching your instructor, watching your classmates. Then the audio starts coming in and then you start realizing, oh, this is what they're saying. So visual, audio, you start processing. It was funny going through the process and not knowing that it was a process, but we're here 32 years later doing our thing. <laughs> Pay attention. Pay attention. That's a common answer. That's it. Pay attention and uh, listen. That's it. Were you not good at listening? No. I was a troublemaker, sir. <laughs> I was uh, the kid that needed help, put it that way. And uh, you know what? I got it. I literally got it. Martial arts uh, took care of me my whole life, you know. And, and now I'm passing it on, especially with the gathering of styles. And, and um, we're bringing that back. We're helping uh, the, the next generation of kids, uh, the kids that have you know, problems, the kids that don't want to go home. Kids that have no, you know, friends, no, no, you know, family, you know, no furniture. That's what the gathering takes. We give, we give the kids a, a great day, a fancy hotel. We feed them, and they get to interact with all the grand masses that loves martial arts as much as they do. You know what I mean? And like I said, I have the different styles. So you know, I got a grand master that teaches jujitsu. I got one that teaches Shorin Ru and so forth, and kung fu and so on and so on. You know, it's all about giving back, sir. Just like you do, man. I see your product. Proud of you. You know. If you could go back in time, what would you tell yourself on your first day of training? Don't skip leg day. Okay. <laughs> Is that something you were prone to do? I was prone to do that a fair bit, and as a result, I've suffered some leg injuries over the years and had to work around those. But in all honesty, that's one of the bigger things that I think is it's kind of overlooked. Is really trying to find a way to describe it better. It's not so much the leg musculature that I'm concerned with, it's more joint health. Take care of your joints. Don't jump out of planes. <laughs> I try not to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, train harder. Train harder, because no matter how hard you train, you should still train harder. Always be the hardest working man in the room. Always. Were you not? Not always, but as a result, you know, I've suffered a few injuries because of it, but now I always try to be the hardest working man in the room. You know, I could tell myself so much more uh, as I learned today. Um, being humble, number one, you know, uh, my spirit, my spirit wasn't as pure as today. Uh, I am now well conscious of my surroundings now, and, um, you know, I can say I am more kind and more humbled today because of martial arts. Ooh, that's a good question. What would I tell myself? I would tell myself, get ready, you're in for a hell of a ride. <laughs> you're not the first person to say that. Really? Yeah. Well. What were you expecting going into it? What was I expecting? I was expecting to learn how to kick butt and get my butt kicked as well. Um, I was expecting... I don't know, to find, I wasn't, ex I wasn't expecting to find something that I'm very passionate about. I wasn't expecting to find something that I would turn into a lifestyle. That I wasn't expecting. I was expecting a hobby maybe. Something very different came out of it. Yeah. And sir, if you could go back to your first day of martial arts training, what would you tell yourself? Well, I still remember that day and that was the best day of my life. Starting at Keokushin in 1971 in Jamaica, West Indies. Any advice you would give that younger version of yourself? Uh, I think we did the right thing. So the advice would be continue on the same path, continue the journey that I'm still doing, and pass it on to the younger generation. Stay strong and focus. Is that it? That's it. Stay strong and focus. That's what it's all about. If I could talk to the younger version of myself, which would be the seven-year-old Grant, I would say, you're too young to understand this, but you're about to enter something that's going to change your life forever. Focus, dedicate yourself, be ready, and learn from your seniors. What would you tell yourself if you could go back to your first day of martial arts training? That this is a life training. It continues. It never stops.